Hello and welcome everyone to a Mulberry Talent Partners Career Conversation. My name is Kelsey Daly and I am the Talent Acquisition Specialist here at Mulberry. So a little bit about Mulberry. We are a full service staffing and recruiting agency headquartered in Portland, Oregon with an office in the Silicon Valley. We specialize in the professional placement of human resources, professional and financial office, payroll and operations positions with direct hire, temp to hire and temporary opportunities. I would encourage you to check out our website at mulberrytalent.com to check out our previously recorded conversations and view our job opportunities that we update on a regular basis. So jumping into introductions, we are joined by Lauren Francis and Jen Trum. Lauren is our fabulous founder and president. She started Mulberry back in June of 2017 and comes with over 25 years of talent acquisition experience. We're also joined by Jen. So after a 20-year career in human resources, Jen is now a certified life coach for women in HR. She helps women push through the internal obstacles that are holding them back from living their lives with more authenticity and greater fulfillment. Her focus is on women who struggle with the confidence to show up and speak up in a way that is authentically who she desires to be. Today, Lauren and Jen will be focusing on how all HR professionals could benefit from a life coach. So without further ado, I would like to pass it off to Lauren and Jen. Good afternoon, everyone, and it's nice to have everyone on today. And Jen, we're so happy to have you here. And I know Kelsey was, I don't know, Kelsey reached out to you and tell us a little bit about how you found Jen. That was, yeah, I think Jen, you reached out to me on LinkedIn, oh, right? Yeah, um, I think so. I was, yeah, I yeah. think I, I started it. Yeah. And I was looking at your background and I was like, oh my gosh, I'm sure you would bring so much value to our audience based on what you do. So we're excited to have you. Yeah. Yeah. So Jen, and also, could you tell us a little bit, share with the audience a little bit about your HR background and then what you do now. I know Kelsey shared a little bit about that, but we would love to know a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Like Kelsey said, I was in human resources for over 20 years, actually 21 to be exact, old enough to drink alcohol. And over the course of those 21 years, I worked for nine different companies doing human resources. So I used to live down in California and started as an HR assistant, then worked up to a benefit specialist and just worked my way up over the years, moved up to Medford, Oregon. So I'm down in Southern Oregon. We moved up in Medford, Oregon in 2012. And from there, continued to grow in my career in human resources, growing in progressively different challenging leadership roles and got to a point where I was really at a place in my HR career where I got as far as I really felt as though I really wanted to. And I also started to recognize that the things that I loved to do the most in HR, what I was most passionate about was developing people and really working with people and helping people find their own passion and desire. And the more I was in HR, the less I was doing that, you know, it seemed just more and more about compliance and laws and all the things and stuff and COVID hits. And that gave me just the best opportunity of my life to take a step back and really evaluate where I was and where I saw myself going. I'm halfway through my career. I got halfway to go. And so I made the decision to get a certification as a life coach. And now here I am. I, I, I want to coach the people that I have worked with for so many years and was for so many years. That's women who are in human resources primarily, but really anyone in an HR role to help them to grow the way that I did throughout my career and building the confidence I was able to in my careers. I feel like I have a lot that I can offer for for people in HR who, who struggle and really over the course of these last couple of years are struggling more than ever. So I feel like this is a great time and it's a perfect role for me. And I'm just, I'm excited to be here today. So thank you so much for having me again. Yeah, absolutely. And do you coach newly minted HR professionals and help them track their career as well as people that are seasoned and just every different stage of yeah. the cycle. Yeah, no, that's a great question. I coach anyone who's in an HR role who struggles with confidence. So confidence is really what I coach on. And so the level that anyone is at, it's really fascinating. You could be an HR assistant, you could be just out of college 
going to struggle with the same fears around showing up, being who we really want to be, struggling with imposter syndrome. So there's so much that I think is just universal, regardless of the level someone is within HR. And yeah, it's any and all, which is a lot of fun, especially in a group dynamic. Absolutely. And do you, is it in the confidence area, part of it is the confidence to maybe impact a situation where you're going to get pushback or confidence to maybe, maybe share an idea that you feel might be helpful to the organization or to the department. There's so many different ways and how we can influence many times it's that influence piece with leaders. So can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, so I kind of view confidence in three different buckets, and I call it like the ABC. So in bucket A is confidence with being able to advocate for yourself, for the company, for whatever it is. There's B, there's the confidence in believing in yourself, really being able to believe in what you have to offer and your value and your worth when you're at the table and you're, you have the manager or the director's ear and then see the confidence to challenge yourself, to hold yourself accountable, to commit to yourself, to your growth and mm-hmm. to what is you really want and then sticking to it. So I think all three of those, when it comes to confidence are real barriers for so many of us out there. So what are the, some of the tools that you recommend? Meaning like I read today that if you declare your goal out loud, you have a much better chance of getting to where you want to go or 65% or something like that. And then yeah. others feel like you need a coach, of course, a coach. Right. And then others talk about a mentor or an accountability partner. And so there's obviously lots of things. And, and anyway, share a little bit about that. Yeah. So I honestly think that it's going to, it's going to differ for every individual person depending on how they best are going to really be able to take it in and apply it. For me personally, what I do is I start with a six-week program. I think when it comes to something like confidence, for those of us who really struggle in being able to show up in the way that we really want to, I think a six-week commitment to a program is something that really kind of (laughs) hits the ground running. And within the six-week program that I have, it's really about laying that foundation and getting really clear on our why when it comes to wanting to be more confident because I think so often we have in our heads, oh, if I could just show up and if I could say that thing and if I could do that thing and if I could, but what we don't really take the time to do is really understand to the core why, you know, why is it that we want to show up differently? What is it going to mean for our lives? How is it going to help us to, to grow and to show up differently? And so really the process that I go through is to us understand what it is we're really going for and look at it much bigger than the conversation with the boss and to really say, Hey, when it comes to being more confident in your life, what does that really mean for you? If I could wave a magic wand, if I could just take down all the obstacles, what does that look like for you? Because I think so often in our lives, we're not asked that question, right? As kids, we have all these walls and boundaries around us. We're not really asked to say, dream, really have an opportunity to dream. And then from there, we start to build and we start to create with the understanding that there are going to be obstacles in the way. When it comes to making a change in our lives, especially it's something large, like for those who confidence is really something that they struggle with, it's going to be something that's going to require them to really change some things that they're maybe comfortable with or uncomfortable with. So I think part of the process is the understanding that you can never get from here to there in terms of not being confident to like fully confident without some bumps in the road. So that is really the part of the program. That's the biggest chunk of it is to help us work through what those bumps in the road are to look like, to feel, to have an opportunity to understand that that is part of the process. That is the journey of being able to go to that next level. So yeah, it's a pretty incredible opportunity to see people wake 
wake up and see that and be able to say, yes, this is something I'm ready to commit to. But to answer that bigger question you had, I think mentors are amazing and other types of coaches are amazing depending on what's your flavor and any type of personal growth and development I think is amazing. Although (laughs) I always say that it's one thing to take in and absorb. I am a huge advocate of just soaking in as much as I possibly can, but it's whole nother thing to really put the rubber to the road and commit to applying it. And not just once, right? Like when we're trying to do something new and different, it's probably going to come with some stumbles. So it's about getting up and doing it again and doing it again. And so that I think is really where the value of the coaching process comes into play. Yeah, it is. It is that mentorship and that partnership that, that makes the difference because you need an advocate. And mm-hmm. someone to bounce things off of. And it's in your personal and professional life. I've heard right. start right. small, start small. I've had so many people, I'm at a restaurant with people and they receive their, they have their meal and they, something's wrong with it, but they don't say anything. So that's like a perfect time. Yeah, such use, a good example. You know, yeah, just that kind of thing. It's, it sounds yeah. small, but so many people just, no, I don't want to disrupt. I don't want to, all that stuff that we do. And right. uh, Yeah, it really is a process. Do you also, I know some people are better finding their voice in written communication versus it verbally. And I think the verbal piece is more complicated for a lot of people. It's Mm -hmm. particularly complicated, I think, for the younger generations because we're used to texting our thoughts. Sometimes it feels like we can get our message out a little bit easier and we're not in the face of a, another person. Can you share a little bit about that? Yeah, I think that when it comes to communication, our communication style, it's important to honor ourselves and to not feel like we are pushing ourselves to such an extreme that now we're not able to be authentic with who we are and how we feel comfortable showing up. But I do think to the point a little bit earlier, I do think this is where practice, especially for the younger generation. So I have a 14 year old boy. (laughs) All he wants to do is be in the video games and completely the verbal communication has gone in the toilet over the last (laughs) years. And so we have this practice in the evenings where, you know, we just have him practice. And we basically say say that, but it's more about what you would normally do, talking about your day and that sort of thing. But the idea around that is when we're not in practice, like the example you gave about the bill at the restaurant, when we're not practicing, even in the smallest little ways, it's very easy to lose our confidence. It's very easy to lose our comfort, even with being able to do those things. I think a really good example is I work with women who a lot of times have been working for organizations two, three, five, ten 10 years with It has been toxic. They've had to deal with bosses and organizational cultures that have just drove them into the ground. And now they're to a point where they maybe used to feel confident and they used to feel like they they felt like they were adding value, but now they've been beat down so many times that they feel hopeless. And I think that's where trying to help them recognize that because they're so out of practice, that that's where we start. We have to get to a point where this is something that allowing yourself to having a little bit of that discomfort when it comes to starting to get into practice again. Yeah, it's going to be a little uncomfortable that first time you call the waitress back over. But eventually you're going to get a little bit more and more comfortable with it. So I think it's really important to recognize that it is our participation. It's not just our intake of the information and learning. It's also, it has to come with participation. And I would imagine that it doesn't necessarily have to mean a job change. However, COVID helped people with their confidence. And so I've seen a lot of changes. I would imagine that your coaching business is even busier than ever. Yeah, I started during the middle of COVID. So it really wasn't until August of last year that I finally left the last company that I was with. So it's still pretty fresh and newer for me. So I don't know what (laughs) pre-COVID, I don't know what pre-COVID would look like, but I can tell you there, what was it last week or the week before the Forbes article that so many of us are talking about this and 98% of HR professionals are saying that they're burned out in some way over these past couple of years. That is not surprising at all. Mm-hmm. And 
knowing that and having that out there, we're mm-hmm. starting to talk about it more. And we're starting to talk about it more. Oh my gosh, the release that comes with knowing that we're not alone. The release I think so many of us are feeling right now. And I think that that is one reason why I think the coaching for these individuals is you know, popularity. Do you think part of it too was HR is still a very young part of organizations. And when you really think about it, didn't it really start to, as I, I recall, it really started to take hold in, in the seventies, eighties timeframe before it was administration or what did we call it? Administration or uh, oh, personnel. <laughs> <laughs> right? And it really started to take hold, I think in the eighties, as I recall. And so in many ways, it's still a very young part of organizations And it's gone through so many changes and really has started to be recognized as a very integral and critical part. And now with COVID, it is even more so. I think too, what I've seen too, is the committing resources to HR has not been necessarily a priority for some companies. And so I think COVID really ripped the bandaid off that one, would you say? That's one of the reasons why the Forbes article is is really quite a topic at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. It did for so many and then it didn't for so many others. And so I've talked to so many people who the companies that they work for are so strapped because COVID has hurt them in some other way. So very few companies are right where they were two years ago. There's been some kind of odd adjustment that all of us have had to go through. And so that's where the rubber I think is hitting the road right now is those HR professionals that are in the organizations that they're like, sorry, we can't right now. Like they see the carnage, they see all the damage, but still they, they, there's this narrow focus that, that tends to run with in so many businesses where they can't get past the purse strings that are holding them down. And when that happens, I think you now have people in HR basically saying, dude, (laughs) Okay, I'm going to have to cut my losses here. And that I think is, is going to be interesting over, over these next few years as companies are going to need to really face that harsh reality. And they are, but we're just seeing it more and more. Our workforce is never going to be the same again. And I am here for it. I think that is such amazing news in some ways and it's different. And I think we have to just adjust and ride with it. And for those who are still fighting against it, I don't know what to tell you. (laughs) (laughs) You you would have, you would be sitting here talking to me right now had COVID not happened. No, no. Oh, my, my decision to want to be a life coach and to eventually want to go in this direction happened about a year earlier. So all of it, the timing of it was pretty amazing, you know, it's wild and worked out exactly the way it was supposed to. But yeah, I, I had known for a while, I got to a point where I had been really wanting to work for a particular company that is based in Southern Oregon, but Dutch Brick Coffee, which is based in Grants Pass, Oregon. And my dream job working in HR for Dutch Bros Coffee was something I was just wildly excited for. Began working for Dutch Bros Coffee and it is everything you hear. <laughs> amazing company. It's everything. And I got to a point where I was in that role. And like I said, a little bit earlier, it still didn't mean that it took me away from the policies and compliance and all the things that, that just is what kind of the HR role is in, in so many organizations and just by nature of the job description. And so as I started to explore, if that's really the way to go, I realized that there's something more for me, you know, that the, there's some calling for me that I think was beyond HR and beyond Dutch Bros. It was really about being able to serve at a higher level. And that's what led me to life coaching. That's fabulous. I was thinking about how, what you were saying, and I know that owning a business or starting a business isn't for everyone. And it, I started Mulberry and I was able to do that because I had the support of my family and my husband and, and all of that. But how do you help someone with, they come in and they're like, like this, and I want to just quit right now and help them talk them off the ledge and help them sort out all their feelings. I guess the last question would be what kinds of, and maybe you could answer this in two parts, but the other part would be, how do you help people prepare for interviews 
in the sense of getting what they want. So many times people, they'll, the offer is this and they accept it, but they really would like to negotiate, but there's fear around that. So that's a kind of a lot. <laughs> I'm like, I'm going to do my best to unpack that. <laughs> okay, so in terms of the process, I think was the first question that you had talked about for someone who comes in and they are just over it. I think I deal with a lot of people who are in HR department of one mm-hmm. and the HR consultant, I think is another one. I think people who are in larger HR offices a little bit more have opportunities to commiserate with one another a little bit, but still they're my clients as well. And I think going back to the earlier piece around, it doesn't really depend on the level someone is in HR. It also really doesn't depend on what role that they have. I think there's this common thread that so many of us share. And it's really about, am I really acting in my life in the way that I know in my heart that I want to be? That is really, I think the essence of what coaching is. And that can be the job that you currently have. It can be leaving. It can be so many things. And that's, I think, the beauty of coaching and why I think a lot of coaches out there really focus on specific things. They focus on weight loss. They focus on this. They focus on that because it tends to be so much bigger than that in a way. So when you start with one, then it helps someone realize, oh my gosh, I just need to recognize how I'm showing up and whether or not this is what I really want for the rest of my life. So I think that's really the first step is to help that individual either before they become a client or as they become a client, see that gap between where they are and where they want to be and to recognize that they at any time can start that shift in that process. And then from there, it's just up and away. (laughs) Okay. Oh, there was something about when they're starting a job and negotiation and pay. Yeah, Yeah. because that tends to trip people up, particularly in the confidence area. Yeah, and I think that for anybody who is, you know, that incredibly scary conversation, I think salary negotiations is definitely way up there. I think what is so important that I tell my clients is to really be intentional around how it is you want to show up for that conversation, one. And then number two, be really honest with yourself about what you're willing to accept and what you know, you feel is beyond that. And then find your way to be committed to that outcome. Mm -hmm. Find a way in your heart to be, you don't have to show up confident, right? And I think so often we think, oh my gosh, if I'm not like totally confident, I'm finally getting called into this meeting and I'm not confident. I'm so afraid. And I think we talk ourselves into this whole drama around having to feel like we have to be at a 10 when it comes confidence. And one thing that I really teach my clients is it doesn't matter if you're at a confidence of 10, if you are committed to that outcome, you know what it is you're asking for, you know what you're going for, and you know what your like drop off is where you'd walk away. You're okay. You're golden. Just commit to that walk in and hold steady. And so when you can get to that place, it's such a different energy. I think feeling as though we have to like have all of this put together. And so I think energy is a really important component to that, that I help teach my clients to recognize how they can regulate by really paying attention to where their energy level might be, because what could feel like fear could actually be confidence (laughs) under You know, the energy is just a fascinating thing. And I think we, we have all kinds of drama that will come up around it if we're not really actively paying attention to it. Yeah, it's so true. And we oftentimes try to explain why we need something as opposed to just declare it. Mm -hmm. And, and I think too, when it comes to salary negotiations, sometimes it's really the words you choose too. So for example, I was hoping for X or uh, (laughs) the salary range I'm targeting is X. So there's, so the the way in which you communicate that language, it's a, it's a declaration more of an ask, if you will. And there's ways to do it where you're not being overly assertive or aggressive. You're just being clear. Exactly. Clarity that comes with that. And people take you seriously and then stop talking. We sometimes will, I try to explain it 
and there's no explaining. It's just, it is. Especially as women, man. We have this way of, of thinking we have to have this big story behind it, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So that's just so true. I had some other questions for you. I went off script. It was just so much fun. That's always the best sign. <laughs> Ever you go off script. I guess what I'll do is I'll just ask you, we were at the end of our time, tell how can people find you? What is, because what we would like to be able to refer people to you and maybe a little bit more about your, your process. Like you mentioned six weeks. Can you give us a sense of what that would look like for someone? Yeah. So first how to reach me. So I have a Facebook group that I would love anyone in HR to join. It's called HR in the middle. And so you can search for it in on Facebook. You can also reach me if you wanted to send me an email, if you're interested in connecting with me for one-on-one, just to get to know each other a little bit better. I love that. You can reach me via info at Jen, J-E-N-T-R-U-M-M.com. And then finally, you can find me on LinkedIn. And my full name is Jeanette, J-E-A-N-N-E-T-T on LinkedIn. So the six weeks program is called Alive to Thrive. And the word thrive has HR bolded and underlined. And basically it's a six week coaching program. It's a group coaching program that typically is going to have somewhere between 12, 16 participants within the group. And we meet once a week and Out the course of the program, we it's progressively goes through a little bit what I was talking about earlier. We'll start by by talking about some of the stories that we tell ourselves. What is it that we really are telling ourselves around who we think we are? And more importantly, where what do we tell ourselves around our potential for more? Our to be more confident, our potential to have more, to do more. What is it we're telling ourselves? And so then from there, we start to build that out and we start to recognize what it is we would really want if we could wave wave that magic wand and start to bridge the gap between the two over the course of the next four weeks. And so throughout that process with each week, an hour coaching call with the group. And within that coaching call, we'll do some breakouts. And then we'll also do larger group conversation and collaboration. I'll do a little bit of coaching while on the group call for anyone who's open to it and interested to be coached in front of the group, because it's always a great opportunity for all of us to learn together and to recognize that we're not alone. And then following the program, then there's opportunities to continue to do one-on-one or a six-month mastermind that I do following the six-week program. That's great. I didn't know it was group. That is fantastic. We worked with a a woman who works specifically on imposter syndrome and she does the exact same thing. It's a group and it's exactly, I think it is the same time frame and everything. And it really makes a difference to have others in the group that understand what you're going through and they have share their stories. And I'm sure it's very dynamic. Yeah. Yeah. It's pretty special really. And when you do get into that environment and recognize, like you see, can see yourself and others. And I just think that's one of the greatest gifts that I have being in this new role is to be able to share my story, but then to also see so many other stories that are so similar and it allows us to, to help each of us grow from one another. That's incredible. Could you say your, share your email one more time? So for everyone, and then, then we'll sign off. And it was just so good to have you here today. And I think that what you're doing is fabulous. And I love that you're focused on HR professionals. I'm so happy you reached out. Oh, so, thank you so yeah. much. Yeah, this was, this was an honor to be here. I really enjoyed our conversation. Email is info at jentrum.com. Great. So Thank you everyone for joining us. We're so happy that you chose to tune into our webinar and thank you so much, Lauren and Jen. Thanks. Bye everyone. Thanks again for coming on. Okay. Bye-bye.